Okay, please continue to enjoy your meal. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to introduce our speaker today. It is Steve Drake. He's going to be talking to us about pickleball, the fastest growing sport for active adults today. Steve, take it away. All right. Well, thank you for having us here to talk about this uh, sport that we love. I hope that after we talk a little bit, you'll have a little more affection for it, too. Let me just say to begin with, um, I appreciate very much the Pledge of Allegiance. I appreciate the devotional, the scripture, and the prayer. As a, as a Baptist pastor, it makes me want to take up an offering. <laughs> I appreciate that very much, and I, I wish we would re-enlist all y'all to get back in the classroom uh, with those values. We, we sure miss that sometimes. All right, my name is Steve Drake. I'm 75 years old. I've been playing pickleball for four years. I was a racquetball player before COVID. COVID locked down the racquetball court because it's 800 square feet enclosed and they didn't want us breathing the air. And as a result, they, those racquetball courts at the Y have been turning into yoga courts. And so racquetball players have to drive to Cartersville now. Somebody in our church um, which, by the way, Mary Atlaw is uh, one of our church members, and good to see her. Somebody said, well, Bill Thornton is going to be at the Thornton Center teaching a Saturday pickleball. This was in 2020, I guess. And I said, uh, well, what is that? They said, well, come and see. So I came, and we met right over here in this gymnasium. And y'all you know Bill Thornton, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Fifteen minutes after he started showing us what to do and how to do it, I said to myself, I, I can do this. I was 70 years old at the time, 72 maybe, and uh, so I, I can do this for it. It's a cross between ping pong, badminton, tennis, and other sports too. I was a baseball player as a young youngster, and much of what I learned playing baseball, I, I use in pickleball. Sometimes when you're on third base and somebody it's a line drive to you, you can't go like that. You've got to watch the ball and catch it. And so that's helped me not do that when somebody hits a pickleball at you. All right, so it's been around since 1965. It's been around a long time. But uh, like I say, in 2020, I didn't even know what it was. So the growth has been incredible. Let me just show you. In 2020, a survey was made. <coughs> Tennis players in America in 2020 numbered 17.7 million. By three years later, in 2023, they had grown to 23.6 million, from 17.7 to 23.6. Golfers in America in 2020, 24.8 million. In three years, they were up to 25.6 million. Pickleball in 2020, had 4.4 million players. Three years later, 48.3 million. This is what the graph looks like of those three years. That's how fast, it's not just the fastest growing sport in America, it's the fastest growing sport in history. So I'm saying that just to say, there's something about this sport that is intriguing, it's addicting, but it's addicting in a good way because it, uh, it addicts you to something that's good for you and helpful. Rome Pickleball is a part of the parks and recreation, but the administration of, of the tennis, very tennis and the pickleball courts has been jobbed out to the Cliff Drysdale Corporation that does this all over America. And, uh, so they, they, we answer to them, they answer to Rome's Park, Rome Parks and Rec. Alex Torek is our director. I have his card here and I have a phone number. I'll give out to you in just a minute if you'd like to write the phone number down. This is to the office, not to his personal phone. Uh, in case you'd like to call, or is it open now? Has it rained? Call, close the courts down or, or for whatever reason you might want. So I'll, I'll give you that in just a little bit. My friend Tony David Gario is here. He's kind of our uh, unofficial media guy. He makes a lot of videos of uh, the goings on at the court <coughs> tournaments. And then just normal community building, uh, 
there's a lot of that that goes on. That may be one of the greatest aspects of this sport is the community building. I just left down there a little while ago, and there were in excess of 50 people playing from 8 o'clock until about uh, 11 o'clock. There were two courts of what they call Ram Robin. One court was uh, a number of people that played at a 2.5 level. That's a beginner level. And then another court of just ladies that wanted to have a ladies group. And they had about you know 20 people there too. And they, they ranged from 2.5 to 3.5. And they're, they're a little bit better players. And then, and then the, the open courts where we just come and sit and somebody will say, we need one more. And you go into the game. And you don't have to worry about people saying, well, we have our own little group here and you can't play with us. So it's very open and we encourage people that we don't know to play. On Saturdays, the first Saturday of each month, we have a mixer. And the mixer is to play with people you don't know. So you get to know folks. And that's one of the great aspects about it. It's a fun, social, low-impact game that combines the elements, as I said, of table tennis, ping pong, badminton, tennis, and other sports. It's played on a smaller court than tennis. In fact, you can put two pickleball courts into one tennis court. That means you don't have to run as far, especially if you play in doubles, and uh, it's easier to get to the ball. The balls are plastic, and they have holes in it, like this. They don't go as fast as a tennis ball. It's a pneumatic ball with compressed air that goes at tremendous, uh, well over 100 miles an hour at times. 60 miles an hour is really fast for a pickleball, and so uh, it's easier to get set and get ready to play the ball because it's not coming as fast. It, it can get fast if you're right by the net hitting back and forth, bam, 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 like that, but for most of us, we stay back and, and play balls that are more easily played. The paddle is lightweight. It, um, it's not too expensive. You, it can get expensive. This one, $275, but there are a lot of them for $14.95 at Walmart that do the same job, pretty much. Um, it's easy to learn. It's not a difficult sport to learn at all. Uh, we won't get into that, but we're going to do a little demonstration in a little while so you can see uh, Tony and I will play a little bit and show you some of the different shots that we make. It's great exercise, it provides a good workout, it's not too strenuous on your body, and um, it's good cardio too. It's a social activity, typically played as doubles. There are younger fellas, and a little bit lighter fellas, that can play the entire court, both sides, all by themselves, one person on each side. That's not me, but there is a, there's an arrangement of singles where you just play half the court. It's called skinny singles. And so you don't have to run so far, and I've played tournaments in that, and, and that's a great way to play also. It improves balance, it improves, improves agility, it, the movements uh, in pickleball can help maintain and improve your coordination. In fact, I, I read an article this week that says any racket sport, table tennis, tennis, badminton, pickleball, People who play those sports live longer. That's what the, this report said. And partially because it keeps your mind active, it keeps your, your, your agility uh, in shape and coordination and balance. Tony mentioned something just a minute ago. That, uh, the next point was it's mentally stimulating. Strategy involves you to keep your mind sharp. He just saw something on the internet and it was entitled, how pickleball, how pickleball made me a better teacher. <laughs> so maybe this should be part of the teaching program at the colleges. It helps you be, uh, makes you more adaptable. If you can, you can play at your own level. You'll start off 2-0 or 2-5, depending on what your background is. And the levels go from 2-0 to 2-5, 2-5 to 3-0, 3-0 to 3-5, 4-0 to 4-5, all the way up to 6-0. Those are the pros. But most of us play in the 3-0 to 4-0 range, right in there somewhere. It's affordable. Like I say, you don't have to spend much money on the equipment, but you can spend as much as you want. I think some of the ladies there spend more money on the cute little outfits that they wear. <laughs> so basically, there's two, there's two primary 
uh, since I'm talking to teachers, I'll say foci, things to focus on, and that is tactic and technique. Tactic is where you want to hit the ball. When you want to exploit a weakness on the other side of the net, maybe one player is slower, maybe one player doesn't come to the net, you can exploit that, that's a tactic. The other is technique. Tactic is where you want to hit the ball. Technique is how do you do that? How do you get it there? Slice, overhead, block, you know, whatever you, lob, whatever you want to do. And so uh, you'll start with the basics of how to hold a paddle on every paddle. It's just like a tennis paddle. It has eight facets to it. My knuckle goes on this facet. At, it's about two o'clock. That's called uh, a western, I mean, a, a continental grip. You move your knuckle to the next facet. That's called uh, an eastern grip. The next facet, that one right there, is called a, a mini western and some people even put their knuckle on the very bottom <coughs> like that, and that's called a western grip. But continental is the easiest grip to learn, and if you can hit forehands with it, you can hit backhands without ever having to move the paddle. If you're hitting a western grip, and you hit a forehand, and then somebody hits a backhand, you've got to turn your paddle over and get set for a backhand shot. So continental is the way to go, in my opinion. Don't worry about being perfect at pickleball. It's all about having fun and staying fit and healthy. And in just a little while, when you get finished here and finish with your meeting, we're going to go into the um, gym and Tony and I will do a little demonstration. Here's the number. If you want the number from the office down there, that's 706-290-0072. I'll put it on the table back here with Scott. And uh, I've got my cards back there also. It has my personal phone number. You're welcome to call me anytime. Uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm a pastor here at the church. I'm used to getting calls at all times of the night and day. And so you'd be welcome to do that. You ain't believing right kids. Okay. All right. If I got a question, got a question. Don't ask me a question. <laughs> you got a question, now it's time. Don't have emergency surgery. We're right behind the Floyd Hospital. Exactly. <laughs> so there you go. They moved right over there. And I really am glad that you mentioned that because there are some times when somebody will take a spill. One of our friends who's named Spill uh, tried to reach too far and, and fell over and broke his elbow. And so the ambulance came over, got him to deploy, got, got his heart surgery, got pins in his arm, went home, got all mended up, fell down, broke the same arm in the same place. So we do want to be careful. The most common injury in pickleball is when somebody lobs the ball over your head and instead of turning around and going to the place where it's going to land and then hitting it, they run backwards and then they go over to the back of the head. That's the most common thing. So you got you to gotta realize what kind of condition you're in when you start the game so that you don't overextend yourself and lose your balance and fall into the net or fall on the floor or something like that. I like to have one thing, Steve. Huh? I like to have one thing. Yeah. When I moved here, I retired from Connecticut and I came down here, I had some friends here, and uh, I wasn't quite sure where I was going to retire. I was kind of taking a little trip around, visit my kids down in Florida, and kind of figuring things out. I went down and played pickleball. I met Steve, I met Bill Thornton, and Bill was, what, 89 now, 88? Yeah. And uh, they both took me in. You know, Yankee, I'm the only, I was the only Yankee down there that <laughs> But I tell you, they got 50 friends there. The ladies bring me clothes, they bring me food. Uh, it's just a wonderful, it's an unbelievable sport. So if you've got family and friends, you got grandkids and your kids as well, the kids are really starting to come out. And we, when the kids come out, I make sure I see videos, and we have a classroom, so I just want to say that. All right, one more question. <coughs> question. I don't know the, the, the facts about it. Many of them are. And then again, many tennis players think that pickleball is the illegitimate stepchild of tennis. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they're reticent. But now you see Andre Agassi and, and a lot of the, the old pros that we used to watch in our day, they're playing pickleball now in a big way. Golfers are beginning to, professional golfers are beginning to pick it up too. The largest group, the, the, the highest growth, growth rate is in the category of 18 to 33 year olds. It started off as just an old person's sport that didn't anything around it, but it's becoming very competitive and uh, it's, 
getting younger, <coughs> but there's still a, a lot of a lot of older folks playing, and it's it's good for us for other reasons than these uh, younger players. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Give him a hand.